Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Stewart, and we will be exploring how to translate keywords into successful research. Before we begin, it is important to understand that this is an art and not a science. Once you understand how to use keywords effectively, you will be better equipped for the trial and error of discovering what keywords will work. Remember, this is a case of having to discover how to align our language with how the sources are already organized. From our research question, how have various stakeholders responded to Seattle's initiatives and approaches to creating and preserving green spaces as the city has grown in population? We might pull out any of the highlighted words, stakeholders, Seattle, creating, preserving, green spaces, population, or others as key concepts. These key concepts act as keywords when we use them in a search. An example search might be Seattle and population and green space or park. With this search, we are looking for sources that touch on the key concepts, Seattle, population, green space, parks. Boolean terms are relationships that we create between our keywords. These include and, or, not, and near. I will be focusing on and and or. And makes your search narrower by adding terms that must be present in a search result. In our example search, Seattle and population, the and means that both keywords must be present. In the same search, green space or park means that just one of those terms must be present. This is a good strategy when there could be synonyms being used and you're not quite sure what language the system is using. Or will add results to your search and and will limit your results. Notice the parentheses around green space or park. These ensure that the search system knows which keywords specifically can be searched for in place of one another. In our example search, green space is in quotation marks. That is because it is a phrase. The default of UW library searches is to add an and between every word searched. Without quotation marks, the word green and the word space would simply both have to be present, but not next to each other. To ensure the words are found next to each other in the results of your search, use quotation marks. The next slide will have a video showing how to use these strategies to find resources with UW Libraries Advanced Search. When we're doing research with UW Libraries website, the important first step is to start at the UW Libraries website. This site has the URL www.lib.washington.edu, but the easiest way to get to it is really just to Google UW Libraries and click on that first link. You'll see the screen as our homepage for the UW Libraries website and this purple search bar right in the middle near the top. I would recommend if you're doing heftier research to always go ahead and start by clicking this advanced search button. That will take you to a screen that gives you more functionality and power in determining how your search is going to go. So once this loads, we'll see the ability to input keywords. So I have this line, we're searching for library resources and I can say any field contains Seattle. So any field is the default for where you are searching for that word to be present. But you could change this to be the title, the author or creator, the subject, or the ISBN. So any field is looking not at the full text, but pretty much all descriptive information that the UW Libraries has for a given research. So I have any field contains Seattle and, here comes in our Boolean term, we can change that to and, or, or not here, but I'm going to leave it as and for now and any field contains green space. Notice that I'm using quotation marks to make sure that that phrase is kept together. Then I'm going to click to add a new line and have and any field contains population. Now before I search, I might choose to limit my publication date to the last five years simply because my topic is more of a current topic and I might not want things that are really outdated about green spaces in Seattle or population. Then once I have that all set, I'm going to go ahead and click this search box. Now you'll see here I got 1,096 results and I can see some articles and ebooks and whatnot. But I first want to turn my attention to these filters on the left hand side under refine my results. These let me 
limit what types of results I'm seeing. So I might say, okay, only want resources that are available online. Right now I don't really care about resource type, but if I only wanted articles, I might click articles. You'll see my publication date is already limited to the last five years. I could choose specific authors. I might choose I only want English articles. And then I could choose journals, collections, topics, stuff like that. Once I click those filters, I have to click this green box to actually apply the filters. So I'm going to do that now. And the default is to have these filters just as active filters right here. But if I changed the search at all and clicked this search box again, all of my active filters would go away. If I want to make sure that no matter what my search is, these filters are active, I want to hover over them and click to lock them in place. That way, if I change my search, they remain. So if I look just at the top results right here, it maybe doesn't seem like my search is super targeted at what I want right now. So I might try to change one of my terms at the top of the screen. I might replace population with the related term urban development because that's more focused and maybe our UW library search catalog is more tailored towards that type of language. So I'll hit search here. And you'll notice that all of my filters remained because I locked them and I'm now down to 367 results, which are still way more than I would ever read, but better than over a thousand. So now I might click on this first ebook, GIS based suitability analysis and planning of green infrastructure, a case of the PPCOD Capitol Hill. That sounds like it's pretty aligned with my research question. And it will give me this pop up that will give me more information about the source. So the first thing I'll see is under view it, I see this green box prompting me to log in. This is really important because if I'm off campus, I won't be able to see the resources that we link to unless I'm logged in. Now, if I look under this view it line, there's this link to see it online. So if I wanted to actually see this ebook, I would click this hyperlink and that's going to give me a pop up window. So I can see the same article is here and this page is going to look different depending on what distributor we're linking out to, but in this case I would open up the PDF by clicking this view slash open link on the left hand side. Now if I wanted to figure out is this ebook actually talking about something that is important to my research, I might read this summary and decide okay is this actually aligned with what I want to do. I also highly recommend looking at these terms that are next to what says LCSH and PCI subjects. These are potential keywords that you can use. They're basically keywords of the library catalog system. So someone went through and said, okay, the three main things this article is about is the economical infrastructure of Washington State Seattle, the sustainable urban development of Seattle and Washington State, and Capitol Hill. So these are keywords that I could click to and see what else is tagged with the same subject information. So I might add these to my list of keywords for searching. If I wanted to save this resource and return to it later on, there's a couple of ways that I could do it. One way is to save this permalink somewhere. This is a stable link that won't change or won't die. I would always recommend if you're copying links to copy this link because it will take you directly to the UW Libraries page and will prompt you to log in so that you can get access to that resource. You also will see this option in this right hand corner to pin an item. I've actually already pinned this article, so if I remove it, you can see it happen. I'll click this pin button to add this item to my favorites. And I can see all of my favorites by clicking this pin in the upper right hand corner. This is a really good way if you're just looking for resources but not going through and reading them all in one go to save resources for later. I also always like to point out the citation feature. If you hit the citation button, you'll see different forms of citations. We have APA, AMA, MLA, and these are usually pretty good. I would always recommend verifying that they're accurate, but it's a good jumping off point for generating your own citations. Now, if I go back to my results list, You'll see that most of these are saying in green online access. That means that there's a pretty good chance that we have online access to it. If we don't have something readily available, usually this is in orange. But I'll show you a workaround for how you might get access to a resource even if we don't have online access. So with this resource, 
what you'll see under the view it is there are a ton of different hyperlinks. That basically just means that this resource is held by a couple different collections and you can really click any of the hyperlinks in order to see it. But you'll also see under availability and request options this purple button to request an article scan approximately one to two days. You'll see this when you're logged in. And this is something you're only going to want to push if you don't see hyperlinks under the View It button. So these are for articles that the UW libraries do not have access to, but one of the other libraries that we partner with might. So if you wanted this article and there weren't those hyperlinks above, you click to request an article scan, and it would take you to this pre-populated field for the information of what you're interested in and you would just go ahead and submit that request. This is one way we can share resources with other libraries and try to get you some stuff that we don't necessarily have access to all on our own. I hope this was a helpful introduction to how to use some basic functionality of UW Libraries Advanced Search, and I hope that you have a great day. Let's recap some of what we just learned. Always, always, always log in. This is how the third-party sites that we link to know that you are allowed access to our resources. This also allows you to request article scans, pin articles for later, and more. You are also going to want to remember to filter your search after clicking enter. You can filter by resource type, author, publication date, language, and more. This gives you the power to limit the sources you have to browse through. Remember that you can lock these filters so that if you change your search terms, the filters remain. Once you have selected an item and are looking at the catalog page for the full record, remember, subject is a good heading to look under for more keywords. This can also help you align your language with how the information is organized. Pinned items are saved so you can find them later in My Favorites, as long as you are logged in. This allows you to not read 10 sources or more in one sitting. Always be sure to copy the permalinks or stable links instead of the URL at the top of a resource. Otherwise, it might not know you have access to a given resource or it might become a dead link. UW Libraries Catalog can also auto-generate citations. Remember to select the right citation style for your class and check citations for accuracy. I hope that these tips and strategies are helpful for you in the conducting of your own research.